during the ASCO 2023 plenary session, we presented uh, the initial results from SWOG S1826, which was a randomized phase three trial of patients with advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma, stage three or four uh, disease. <clears throat> and we were comparing uh, the current standard, a current standard, brentuximab vidotin combined with AVD compared to nivolumab uh, AVD. The reason we did this study is that uh, the treatment of hot, advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma has varied for years and decades. Uh, the standard has been combination chemo uh, chemotherapy, but we use different regimens for pediatric patients, uh, for adult patients, and even globally, we use different regimens for adult patients. An interesting um, you know, thing, uh, the a difference is that actually children, pediatric patients, particularly in North America, actually a majority of them receive radiation, even for advanced stage disease. And so that, you know, this disease disproportionately impacts young patients and we want to, uh, you know, try to reduce late effects um, of our chemotherapy and radiation treatment that we use for this disease. So recently, brentuximab vidotin was shown to improve outcomes uh, in patients with advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma in this disease and has become a new standard. Uh, we ha also have learned that PD-1 blockade with drugs like nivolumab uh, can be very effective in Hodgkin lymphoma. It's a very targeted therapy for this disease. Uh, based on some genetic changes that occur in the Hodgkin lymphoma tumor cells. So the question became very clear. Let's compare brentuximab vidotin compared to nivolumab, and, and we'll try to harmonize the way we treat this disease using the same chemotherapy backbone, AVD. Ultimately, we enrolled uh, 994 patients. The 994 patients, we really represent, uh, enrolled a representative population. Uh, a quarter of patients were under the age of 18. 10% were over the age of 60. Uh, a quarter of patients were Black or Hispanic. Most patients actually uh, were had a higher risk disease. As a, for example, two thirds had uh, stage four disease. In terms of uh, the safety, uh, we found that nivolumab AVD was well tolerated. Uh, there was uh, less peripheral neuropathy, uh, as you would expect, uh, than using brentuximab vidotin AVD. Uh, there was not actually um, a lot of immune-related toxicity, which is something we wanted, you know, we were we were concerned about or wanted to, wanted to follow. Actually, the rates of immune-related toxicity were similar across the arms. There was more neutropenia with nivolumab AVD, but that's actually because GCSF growth factor was required in the brentuximab arm, but not in the nivolumab arm. There were no there was no increase in infections, uh, infectious complications uh, due to that neutropenia that we saw in the nivolumab arm. Uh, but overall, nivolumab AVD appear to be uh, better tolerated. And then when you look at um, things like treatment discontinuation, uh, double the amount of patients had their brentuximab and discontinued as compared to nivolumab, for example. So this is actually, in terms of the efficacy um, results from this study, this was an early, this was a second interim analysis, so only at half of the events for the primary analysis. Um, but based on the dramatic difference that we saw in progression-free survival, the study was uh, determined to have met its primary endpoint, showing that nivolumab uh, combined with AVD actually improved progression-free survival compared to brentuximab and AVD. The hazard ratio was 0 0.48, so a 52% reduction in the risk of disease progression or death, which was you know, quite dramatic. And the one-year progression-free survival uh, when the volumab AVD was 94% compared to 86% with brentuximab vidotin AVD. So that was with a median follow-up of 12 months. And we're continuing to follow patients for overall survival and to confirm this progression-free survival benefit. Uh, Event-free survival was improved also. And overall survival, uh, we still need more time. Those data are not mature yet. When you look at subgroups, uh, look at the forest plot, the, the benefit from nivolumab AVD was consistent across the subgroups, which was really reassuring, uh, whether patients were young or old, high risk, low risk, stage, you know, stage four, actually patients had a quite, you know, a dramatic benefit. So, you know, uh, probably one of the most uh, interesting uh, and important findings from the study is that six patients out of nearly 1,000 uh, received radiation, which is a dramatic reduction in the use of radiation in pediatric patients. To summarize, uh, the S1826 study demonstrated that nivolumab AVD improved progression-free survival compared to brentuximab vidotin AVD. It improved event-free survival. It was uh, We reduced acute toxicity from the regimen since nivolumab AVD was better tolerated than brentuximab vidotin AVD. And we more or less eliminated the use of radiation for these patients, uh, thereby, you know, hopefully reducing late toxic effects of this regimen. Uh, so based on these data, uh, you know, we would say that, you know, we're, we're, we're really, uh, there's a key step towards harmonizing the treatment uh, of Hodgkin lymphoma amongst pediatric and adult patients. Uh, but really with these data, nivolumab AVD is, is really poised to be a new standard of care for the treatment of advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma. <laughs>